So this is the passenger seat up front where Mrs. Sprinter would sit most likely and uh, work on her laptop or have her morning breakfast, possibly if she doesn't want to use the dining room. Uh, but this Lagoon table here, uh, which is made of cherry with an epoxy coating, you can use it as an extension to the countertop area. We sized it so it fits right in that opening as I did in van number one. Uh, and then you can bring, swing it around like this. I put reading lights on both sides here near the handles uh, and you can direct those right down to your, your work. Mr. Sprinter, his seat does swivel, but not all the way around. There's not enough room to put a workstation flip down behind the bathroom here. So we got him one of those uh, workstation tables that clicks into your steering wheel and his reading light will shine down on that. So I'm sitting in the driver's seat now and I've got to look at the lens. I'm sitting in the driver's seat now and I'm swiveled. You know, I can't swivel all the way around. Uh, so I'm kind of facing the sink right now on an angle. Uh, but I wanted to show you this little design that Alex did. Uh, we, this is the, the dimmer switch for the bathroom. And then I gave him a little USB plug here. And then as I showed you, there's another one on that peninsula. I said, Alex, we have to have access to those uh, shower controls. All my water lines, wherever there are fittings, I need access. He said, okay, here's what we'll do. He developed this system where this just slides up and I have access to my, my, my water lines. Look at that. And then you put it back down. Hopefully you never have to get in there, but if you do, and his tolerances are so tight. Isn't that nice? No rattle, we already checked that. We're not done yet, you see? There's a, a space in here where we gotta trim it out. We had to get this van ready for their trip. They're going on a three week trip, cross country. And uh, so when they get back from that trip, bring the van back and we'll finish up all these little details. But we basically wanted to get it ready for their trip. So now we'll move rearward. Down the bottom here, we decided to cover the riser step with black plexi. Looks pretty jazzy. It goes all the way down into this. This is a nice big storage area in here. You can put your shoes, uh, hiking boots. So as we enter, this is the feature wall on the bathroom. This is a wet bath and the owners originally wanted cultured marble in there. I said, you can't do that. It's too heavy. Here's the van. It's beautiful. Look at this countertop. The owners really, really went above and beyond with this countertop. How nice is that? Massive sink. It's the biggest sink I could find. So big, in fact, we had to put our faucet controls on the side. I actually like that because otherwise you've got to leave so much room for your controls on the back end of this sink that you get a very narrow sink. It's not very deep. So this is a nice, nice situation. I think I'll do this uh, in future vans as well. And as you can see, we've got the bird's eye maple all the way down this galley. We've got drawers and cabinets and that little, that little jog that I like to make I think that adds uh, a nice special look to this. Gives it some, some depth and some weight. And then as you come further down, we wrap the fridge in bird's eye as well. Everything in here, all this bird's eye maple, we did our laminating in-house. Uh, we bought the skins from a, a great lumber yard in Long Island. We bought the last four or five skins of this bird's eye maple that they had and we used it. Down here we've got the massive laundry drawer. I'll show you how all that works in a minute. A drawer above here, very deep. It's as deep as the fridge, except for about six inches in the back where I need my airflow. The galley cabinet above the sink, we've got lighting. I had my little switch plates made, so we'll be using these in the vans from now on. Triples and doubles. Here is the dining room. Look how cute that looks. That's the pantry. Here's a very small closet, very thin closet. All you need to put in there though, a couple of windbreakers, a blouse or two, 
uh, maybe a blazer if you're going to go to the club for dinner. And there's our power center, all bird's eye, trimmed in 8020. There's an airline cabinet, another airline cabinet. We've got lighting underneath, lighting above. Pretty cool, right? They wanted cultured marble, so we gave them as best a variety that we could, given that this is a van, camper van. But this is a pretty slick bathroom. Uh, we're using the uh, uh, composite boards down low for the boardwalk. That way, uh, there's very little maintenance. And they can take this first section out. You can see the thumb hole there, finger hole. They can take that section outside if they wanted to shower outside and not get their feet muddy. This is a pretty cool shower diverter right here. One side is volume. The other side is temperature. You set it, you forget it. And then they got this really slick shower head that's got a filter in it and it has a shut off. It's a high efficiency shower head with a filter. That last line of defense. So the galley, bird's eye maple, were grain matched horizontally across these top panels. And then each of these bays are grain matched going vertically. The cabinet under the sink is pretty large. You could put a lot of stuff here. We've got a UV water filter system here. And our lines have shutoffs. So there are shutoffs everywhere. You can isolate whatever it is you need to isolate. And that's the uh, trapless trap right there. Cabinet under the sink, pretty big. We've got a thin drawer here. We had to make room in this drawer bay for our faucets. Induction cooktop goes in here. And these are, uh, can you see me? It's like a, it's a Blum drawer glide. Really nice drawer glides, but we modified them so they are, they're soft closed, but yet slam latch. Right at the end, it pulls it in. So that was a, was a risk we took, but it worked out quite well. So there's a bank of three drawers here in the middle, and you never make your drawers the same depth. They should all be different sizes because if something you have doesn't fit in one drawer, it'll fit in the next one that's larger. If they're all the same size and it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit anywhere. This one, massive drawer, uh, I would use, uh, I'd use this for clothing. Uh, this sits right over the big Mameluke battery. This panel down here is just a, a cover. The Mameluke is there, and if I take the panel out, I can remove that battery. We can slide it right out on the floor and get it out that way. Uh, then that, the, the cabling from the battery goes to the BMS, which is under this dinette seat. And then it carries over to my breakers and my inverter. In order to make them really feel like they're on a sailboat, we put a locking latch on top of the pantry. Mrs. Sprinter bought a beautiful mother of pearl clam handle to go with her beach theme. That's the theme of this, this van, beaches and boats. So this was a store-bought pantry for residential kitchen, which means it's 24 inches deep and uh, however high it was going to be. But that doesn't work in a van, doesn't fit. So Ron took this whole thing apart, put it back together the way it should be sized for this use. And it's got those pull-shut Accuride glides. And then we lock the latch again. The galley cabinet houses switches on the end. It's got a stainless steel uh, bottom for cooking, although they're using an induction cooktop, so there are no flames to worry about, just heat. So the galley cabinet comes up and it's working on one of the spring tension rods that I found a few years back and you just have to break the tension and it closes with a magnet. And back here is where I house my second sub panel, which controls all my lighting. Another thing I like to do in my builds is run a sub panel. This little DC sub panel comes off the main. I send it over with a, with a strong enough, heavy enough main line that it can accommodate the circuits I intend to put into this thing, plus future, future growth. So I put all my lighting off this one panel. If I had to send every single light leg back to the main, it's too much. So I come off of that and I spider away from this area. 
So all my lighting is on here. This is where I could put in any of your WeBoost antennas or any of that kind of uh, satellite searching equipment. You can run off this panel. Uh, future, if you decide that this is too much work to the Fiamma awning and I need to press a button, you could run your power for the Fiamma motor off this circuit. In fact, in the Vagabond van, I ran the line right down to where you would make the tie-in for a Fiamma motor. In case someday Dave and Irene get too lazy, they get too old, and they can't do this anymore, then they can push a button. I'm a ball buster, huh? And over on this side, over the refrigerator, same thing. We've got a very deep um, cabinet above the fridge. But as deep as it goes, I still made Alex leave me this much room in the back for the airflow. If you notice, everything, everything has airflow all around the top. So you got convection going everywhere in the van. The dining room has a vague resemblance to the original table I was going to design. This one is on a lagoon arm, uh, but what we do is we keep it locked in place from lagoon swing. And all you need to do is push this out of the way. It's on rails underneath and either party can get up to get the salt or the salad dressing. Say that both ways. This table is also sized so that you can drop it down and bridge the two dinette seats, pull the cushions down, and you've got a day bed for the dogs. Or maybe even Mrs. Sprinter could lay here and read a book, although she's got this beautiful day lounge, which is incredible, right? Look at this. So this is a, a the, the dining room is under the air conditioner and there's two spotlights and those are controlled from right here so you can dim them down to adjust the ambiance. So we have a, an armoire of drawers here as well. This is on the driver's side. I would uh, expect these two drawers to be used for clothing. This is also a very deep drawer. And then this panel is fixed and that is where the Webasto diesel fired cabin heater lives and it's easily serviced by removing these two drawers you can work right in there and uh, pull it out if you need to at a later date so you can get a sense of where things are now this is the closet and the pantry uh, so this is all a column on the driver's side and each side we've got these little elbow pads made in the same countertop now the countertop i believe this was only available an inch in uh, Maybe it was inch and three sixteenths. So we had it milled down to three quarters of an inch for these side pieces for your elbows. So now it's bedtime. What you want to do is bring your pillows down. These guys have to come flat. And then at the same time, you're lowering the bed you pull it out. Now I'm doing this with one hand. This is on 80-20 tracks. It comes all the way out and it has a stop. It glides right over those lower countertops we have. And then the bed goes down. Full queen size bed. Right? Cozy. Now I'm going to show you these airline cabinets and each side has a little shelf with USB. Let's go climb up there. So now I'm up on the bed. We call these the airline cabinets because they look like the cabinets that are above your seats on an airplane. See, you crack that code? The reason we have these angled cabinets is because when Mr. and Mrs. Sprinter are laying down in the bed, a queen size bed, I might add, we don't want anything right in their faces, okay? So that's why we made these cabinets. These are basically drawers on the wall. And we went with a nautical theme. We've got bungee cords in here that can be adjusted any way you want. I figure you're gonna have a couple of stacks of shirts, T-shirts here and here. In the middle, you could put socks and underwear. This is a removable back panel as all the ones in my, my upper cabinets are so that at a later date, we can run wires. Uh, so the bungees hold everything in place. You put your clothes out of the way. It's a good use of space. 
Uh, Mr. Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Sprinter have had this van home now for two days, and they decided before they even took their trip, they want another airline cabinet right here. And uh, we left that space open for a number of reasons. We figured it would be best to let them use the van and live in it for a while, and then they can start to see what they want and what they don't want. Right now, they don't know what they don't know. Uh, we talked about putting a television there on an arm so they could watch that. They don't want that because they have iPads. So uh, the other concern was when you're getting in and out of the dining room chair, you don't want ha have to hit your head on anything on either one of these sides. That's why they're angled. And you can see that above all these cabinets, all the way around, there's airflow. We left this nice shadow line and that gap. So everything behind breathes. And they've got a nice shelf down here with a USB four port USB plug. They've got another shelf in the back for their water and their phone. Another thing that's pretty cool about this bed, in this case, this, this motorized bed was a queen size and it was too big. It did not fit the van at all. Uh, as you saw, I had to pull it all the way out just to get it to lay as a queen, but we cut this bed frame apart and welded it back together uh, and made up the shortfall on the back end. But there's one other thing this bed does. You can pull this thing out and get cozy and then you can raise your feet if you want. So if you get this thing out here and you put the, you know, you set the, uh, set the top back, right? You recline. Look at how comfortable this is, right? That goes up. This comes down. And you push it back for the day. Put your table back up. A little bit of work, but hey, we got a queen size bed. We got a dining room, a big galley, a monster fridge, and a bathroom shower, all in 170 wheelbase. This is not the extended. This is a Sprinter 170. I think it worked out really well. The garage area is massive, both in depth, width, and height. We're leaving this entire area wide open. And as you can see here, just above the roll F screen, you've got your fresh water fill, your vent for the water tank, and then this is an LED button, which lights the tank so you can see the level of water coming up. So all of this is left for the owner to put all his toys in. Now this area, I like to leave it open. I like to put eyes on this stuff almost daily. That's how you can catch leaks and problems as they just occur rather than over time. But uh, we have these covers uh, because we have a, a pretty fancy motorhome here. We're putting these covers in. There's a little C channel that this fits into. And then, it locks in place just like that. Hold on, I'll get the other one. We're using the same marine clasps that we're using inside on the uh, countertops and cabinets. So these guys just go right in there and they click shut just like that. So now you can see how clean this is, right? Very nice. And there's your sight tube. You press the button, you can see the light. You see that level very easily. Garage is really nice. Look at these guys. So the owner brought a lot of his own stuff to my shop in order to add it to the build. And uh, one of those items was the L-Track. And there's no real place for the L-Track in our build, but uh, we cut up some plywood and we rounded it over. Look at that nice cut, Ron did this. 
I, it couldn't be any more perfect if it came from the factory. Uh, and then we use truck bed liner to spray it black and we put the, uh, the L-Track on. Now these are the cargo tie downs that come on the floor of the Sprinter when you buy the van. I could never throw them out. This is the, uh, the second Sprinter. Uh, I take them off to put my floor down, but I kept them in a box, cardboard box, just kept them. And now I said, you know what? Since he gave me these L-Track mounting points, this is a perfect use for these things. You can use them for tie downs. I imagine he'll put his uh, water, his fresh water fill hose here, and he'll put his uh, electrical cord on the other side. Again, the Roll F screen, magnificent. Excellent company. Uh, because their bed during the day is lounge mode, it basically covers this whole area. Uh, and then at nighttime, the bed's down. It's nighttime, so they're probably gonna leave this closed just as it is. It'll act as another layer of insulation uh, to the rear, in addition to their window covers that they had made. This is a company, uh, I need to talk about this company because wonderful, wonder, the wonderful soft goods. I've had a few of these things come in. I've never purchased a set of these covers myself. My clients have purchased them, have them sent to the shop. These, I think, are a particularly excellent fit. I have not seen anything that fits as tight and very well, very well done, very well done. So I'm gonna reach out to this company and uh, we'll get some particulars on that. So that's the garage. So I put one of these outdoor wash downs on this van, like I did on the Vagabond van. Oh. Well, should I leave that in? <laughs> well, you saw it. I'll try it again. I put one of these outdoor washdowns in like I did on the Vagabond van. And you have these little spigots that go in. It's twisted into place, water pumps on inside. Now you've got water coming out, nice high pressure. This line, is connected to a mixing valve. You set that to a warm water temperature that you like, and then you leave it. Set it, forget it. Now you can use this to wash down your bikes. You can use this to hose off the dogs. You could put a, a suction cup enclosure around here and take an outdoor shower. Uh, this is warm water. I'm actually, I feel it's warm because I left the engine running for a little while earlier. We're golden. This is a great little feature to have. Eesh. And then you just take it off, close it up, you're on your way. Here's an outside outlet, 120 volt. Got another one on the peninsula.